I've never seen it this, this high. This was phenomenal. A perfect storm of sorts along the coast. An astronomical high tide paired with storm surge hit twice in one week this past January. The back-to-back -back storms bringing historic flooding to the coast. I'm kind of surprised some of the people are cleaning up now because it could happen another one or two times this winter. The cleanup lasting weeks in some communities. Crews racing the clock before another storm would arrive. More flooding seen in February and March from storms, but luckily the situation was less severe, sparing the coast another catastrophe. Conservationists say the science shows similar storms will continue to hit the coastline at an increasing rate. Each big storm makes the area less resilient for the next. And what the future could bring is concerning to the people who call the seacoast home. So what's causing the change in climate along the coast? Scientists say it stems from a change in sea level. NASA explains it as ice sheets and glaciers are melting and seawater is warming, causing the water to expand. And they say if nothing's done about it, the East Coast alone can see a change in 10 to 14 inches along its coastline in the next 30 years. And they say it is a direct link to human cause to global warming. When you have the wind moving onshore, that's going to push water further inland. And so you add that on top of water that's already moving inland due to sea level rise, you're going to have more extensive flooding. Those watching the ocean say it's important to keep in mind what the storms can bring and try to prepare for them. I'm of a mind, though, that it's, it's a time to think about how we adapt. It's not going away. It's only getting worse. Year after year, Lucia Mora watches repairs made to the seawall and questions what else the state can do to strengthen the wall. These are all independent little rocks and big rocks that alone could be swept away. But more can be done. But what they're allowed to do comes down to state and federal permits. You can build it back to what it was, but you can't build it back to a design that's going to be more resilient to what you're expecting in the future. Changing those permits is a conversation happening at the State House. Those back to back events kind of were, were a, a kind of a big wake up call for everybody. In 2015, a Coastal Risks and Hazard Commission formed, which hired scientists to research the changes and find solutions like new legislation, floodplain management and hazard mitigation. That commission dissolved in 2017. Since then, the Department of Environmental Services has taken on the tasks, partnering with coastal communities. I'm not going to say there's no way to fix it, but it, I want to emphasize that it's tricky. As for those that call the seacoast home, they're taking it storm by storm and say the flooding and change in climate won't have them packing up their homes just yet. It's, uh, it's part of living here. Kelly O'Brien, WMUR News 9.